Catherine Bell and Jim Stenton. Good afternoon. <laughs> so, I mean, Christmas Con's got to be a little bit different of a vibe for you guys than the Comic Cons you've been to. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> that change. And I guess we'll start with you, Trisha. Um, you know, I, this is my first Christmas Con, so I didn't really know what to expect compared to, I have, I've gone to a lot of Comic Cons uh, over the years. But it's, it's all the same. It's just Christmas sweaters instead of alien costumes. It's just everybody here to have fun and, and meet people and uh, see some venues and, and uh, or vendors and, and have a really good time. So uh, I don't really see too much difference about it, really. Have any of you, how has the interaction with the fans been? Has it been the same kinds of stories or has it surprised you in any way? A lot of groping. Um, they haven't seemed to mind it that I've done it. Um, but, um, uh, no, this is this is my first US con and it's been pretty great. And as I told a handful of people I talked to, I don't really watch what I do because it's like listening to your own voice on your voicemail at times a thousand. And so, you know, for me it's like I finish a movie, I go home to my family and don't really think about it again. And then I do these as a reminder to touch base with you guys that it matters so much to and kind of hear why. And so it's kind of great to come back and hear that and why you like certain, certain movies and stories. So it's it's kind of, it's fun for me for that angle. I don't know about Catherine, but I, I've never been to a con of any kind. I, I, I was on, you are a complete newbie. I'm absolutely oh. newbie to all of them, yeah. Way back in the day. Well, it's been great. You guys have been fantastic. Before, before, before I was getting paid to act, I used to do car shows. I would stand on the turntable and talk about the, you know, the beauty and grace of the 96 with Saber. Uh, for beauty. Uh, so I had done conventions, but that was, it wasn't for this. So it's been fun for me because it's, a, you know, for us, we were just, he was just saying, it's fun to hear people talk about projects that mean something to you um, and that uh, you forget that it's important sometimes. And some really touching stories that people, took from movies or whatever, so, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy I said yes. Yeah, same, same here, it's been so lovely to meet so many people and hear just the personal stories of whether you watched with your, your parents or your grandparents or your kids or whichever one of the series that you've seen or movies, um, just so, it's so touching, you know, to know that we, we just have this cool job that we get to show up for work and play a cool character and, and then to realize that the impact that it has and how much it means to all of you. So thank you for that. Thank you for being here. And I think the last thing that I'll say too, it's like, you know, so, you know it's like a little vacuum to go and do these new movies and it's clearly such a kind of a tight-knit community. Oftentimes, like, I don't get to meet a lot of the people that are a part of the community, even on our side of the camera. And so that's that's another benefit. It's my first Christmas con too, but I got to meet it's so many people here that I've either seen or know that's a part of this. They talk about, it, and that's that's such a treat as well. I mean, not these guys really, but but everyone. Else. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the famous ones, <laughs> not her, the ones that didn't do the brew with the slavers, you know. <laughs> Well, Mark, I mean, you said that you film things in a, ba in a vacuum, but uh, A Christmas Present was a big part of the Dance Wars this year, so that was hardly a vacuum. That, that went fully viral. I want to hear how much rehearsal it took to do that dirty dancing move. Um, I don't know. Do we guys know what she's talking about? Yeah. I've been talking about it. No, um, that, that means so many people have seen this. So, I'm not gigantic in the social media, but my last co-star was, and I feel like on the record I got, I got bullied and coerced by my boss, I'm just saying, to do this. And there was a dance competition thrown out to us by co-stars of another movie. 
And so they said, hey, this is it what we're doing. Yeah, she is, started it. She started it, and this is what we're doing. Do you guys have any game? And I'm like, Candace, no, I don't. It's not happening. And so as it got further and further, we realized she's really little, and I'm quite large. And so I was like, well, listen, if we're going to go for it, we're going to go for it and do the dirty dancing lift. But we can't rehearse this thing at all because if you face plant on my failed lift, the production's not going to be happy. So it was a one-time deal. If we didn't get it, we were going to Pulp Fiction or another dance movie thing. So uh, we tried it once, we pulled it off, uh, and I've officially retired. It will never happen again. <laughs> one time. Are you surprised it works? Was I surprised that lift for Yeah, because she had like two burritos for lunch. <laughs> um, James and Catherine, it's been a minute since the Good Witch wrapped up. What do you yeah. uh, um, What do you miss the most about it? Probably the cast. It was the closest cast of any show I've ever done on. We still have a text thread with about eight of us on it where we still keep in touch, um, which is really, as you guys are unusual for, for a show. Um, <laughs> Mark says, what, the Desperate Housewives cast? Does it stay in touch? Uh, That's the only podcast. Some of us do. A couple of lawsuits. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Jesse and I do. But uh, yeah, I would say that because we were all really close, and, you know. But they did it. I mean, it was 15 years. Yeah, they did. Amazing. She did seven years of movies. <laughs> seven, I wasn't in the movies. I know. And the, and the crew is out. Wow, we the same crew. Yes. Almost all of them from the first movie till the very last season of the show in Toronto. And they're family. I mean, they're a family. I was just great people. Just bragging about why she'll talk over her just like on the show. Yeah, God, you just shut up for us. Oh, yeah. Let me talk. I was just bragging about you, but now I'm going to stop. With the fact that she was, you were, I don't know another actress who has been a lead, number one or two, on a series of seven years or more, three times. Seven or eight on your life, or seven, you know, yeah, yeah. and you're and you're like and you're 34. It's pretty amazing. So weird. <laughs> and no joke. I mean, it's it's really pretty. It's pretty amazing because it's yeah. It says a lot about how much people love you. And yeah, there were seven years of movies and seven years of the series. I wasn't in the movies. I was in songs. But then that's why we got to do seven more years because you came in and the series. Isn't it the best? Can't we the best thing? I killed, I killed the, the uh, franchise, but it took me seven years. <laughs> Five minutes and enough of them. Uh, well, Mark and Trisha, you guys did a Christmas movie together, but before that, you had a movie. Trapped up to my th on my thigh. You know, we did that good. Yeah, that, that we was got actually, the bad guys. Yeah, and that was actually my memory of it, because when we, did, when we started the show, they were like, hey, it's going to be like moonlighting, like funny and sexy and a lot of action and do all that stuff. And we got two or three episodes in and we weren't doing action. And Trish and I, like, we both been to stunt driving school. We both been to race car driving school. We have weapons training. Like, we kind of know all these things. We were so excited for the show and felt like that's why we actually got cast in it. And then they weren't, writing, they they weren't writing to it. So they weren't <laughs> writing to it at all. But had the dance? Yeah. And my fingernails were painted. I'm like, guys, this was not the promise of the show. <laughs> But we had, we had a lot of fun, and uh, it was a great, as you talk about um, cast, even though we only went one season, um, it, you know, we're, we're all still very close, and, and it was it, it, it was one of those that if it would have gone for seven seasons, it'd be family, you know, casting crew together. And it, so. and it allowed for Operation Christmas, in a way, yeah, too. Yeah, that's exactly. Then, we, we had a relationship and got that, and, and she said, hey, and that was that was both of our first Christmas movie, wasn't it? Wasn't that your first? No, Christmas? it wasn't my first. <laughs> See, Trisha gave me the green light. She approved me. She approved my casting for my first. <laughs> yeah, I got you into all my no. movies. No, so, so it's her fault. So it's her fault. Come on, let's thank her for that. Yeah. The gift of Mark Lucas for the film. Right. So is not having to run in heels and carry a gun part of the appeal of doing Christmas movies for you guys? I'll just say, I was asked that question at my table, and which I prefer, 
And I love doing the balance. To me as an actor, that's what's fun, is getting to do a legal drama, getting to do, uh, you know, I'm a DA on what's airing right now, a show that I've got airing right now, and, you know, doing, doing a Texas Ranger, and then going and doing a lovely, uh, beautiful Christmas story. If you only got to do one thing all the time, I think it would get a little boring. Um, and, but so I, I love the challenge of, of being able to mix it up. Yeah, me too. I always, that's my favorite is to do something completely opposite from what I just finished. Yeah, just uh, whatever is not that, you know, go play like a crazy drug addict or something, and then go back to Good Witch. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun I, artistically to do that. It, exactly. Yeah. What should we ask him to tell us about? Okay. Um, Paul is just so lovely that it's hard. I, I can't really say anything bad. Um, Yes, we worked together in Battlestar Galactica. I don't think we had any actual scenes together. He was in the first season, um, played Billy, and he was just a phenomenal character. Um, we didn't do a Christmas movie, we did one of the summer ones, Sun, Sand, and Romance. I was very happy to be on a beach in, in Mexico. Um, the first thing that comes to mind, you can ask him about how fabulous, I'm being sarcastic there, but how fabulous are Cenote filming was. Cenotes are supposed to be, you know, I was expecting this, we had a uh, scene in a cenote, I was expecting it to be just like stunning. Let him tell you about it. <laughs> all right, here. Before Catherine did all of these shows for seven plus seasons, uh, in 1992, I just read this, so I want to know personally, this is, this question's uh, for me. I'm nervous. Uh, in 1992, it said you were a body double for Isabella Rossellini on what? Death Becomes Her. And I want to know what that entailed and what that was like. It was actually amazing. I was modeling at the time, not acting, and I got a call. They were looking for someone who was five foot nine and um, had the exact short hair. I had the same haircut as her. And, you know, she was a woman who had like a, a fountain of youth potion. So she was supposed to look like she was 19 or 20, which I was at the time. And she was in her 40s. So they wanted someone whose body looked like a 20 year old. And it was amazing. I got to work with, with um, the entire cast. It was Meryl Streep and I mean, everybody. I got to meet her and Robert Zemeckis and Bruce Willis. What have they done? Who are they? It was, yeah. <laughs> Going, oh my god, this is so amazing. So it was really incredible just to be on that set for like two weeks. I got to work on that show. It was a really cool experience. Yeah. Cool, right? was, it, was it not nerve wracking? I mean, it's just your body. It was. It was just me from behind. So I get out of a pool and I'm walking uh -huh. towards a Oh, I, I Googled it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know. We know the scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah, she, my so cute. She thinks we haven't seen it. <laughs> it just seems like it'd be nerve wracking when you're only little cast, little. not that you can't do it, but that you're only cast for your body. Yeah. It's a little bit of pressure. It was, but I was modeling at the time, so I think it was probably an easy, easier transition for me. I hadn't been acting yet, so it was just, yeah, inspiring to be on the set, but, you know, they taped everything up in front so you couldn't see anything in the front, just from, from the back. That helped a little, but it was still, yeah, it was stressful. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Very cool. So, for each of you, who would be one of your dream castmates on a future Christmas movie? James Denton. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'll play your father. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll turn into a 14 years. <laughs> they, uh, uh, we should all do something. Let's all do it, okay? Uh, <laughs> That's a tough question. I don't know. I know. Yeah, I've only done one. We've got to do the Terry Hatches, right? I didn't reach very far. Yeah. <laughs> Apple didn't fall far from the truth. Well, I produced it. Hallmark's nice enough to let me, as part of my Goodwitch deal, I'd be a producer on the movies. And sometimes, you know, actors will just get a credit because you don't have time. But but we did everything on, on, on these movies. And uh, Terry was part of the deal. If, if I said, if I can't have Terry, I'm not doing the script because she had to put two different, two different verses of the same woman. And she's wildly underrated as an actress. Uh, so, uh, that's my only Christmas movie, so I'd love to do one with many of you guys. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's all do something. Yeah. That would be fun. Right? You're here to hear it You can be getting out of a pool. Yes. Where is this so movie? You. Towards me. <laughs> so, which is your favorite 
uh, Christmas movie trope scene that will have to be in your four star movie. <laughs> The, the, like, like the, the trunk, like the ones you always have, you know, ones you always have to do. It's probably s'mores for me, because I invariably try to get marshmallow on the other cast, or or, or do something ridiculous uh, with that. Um, snowball fighting, if someone's in there, that's always good. Make a snowman. We tried to make the ice skate in ours, and we cut it. And it was like a not ice skate. Oh, ice skate is bad. No one after like cool ice skating. So we cut. That's a, with your producer, you get to do that. I'm like no ice skating. You will do something. Like we had to ski in hours, and my character was supposed to have never skied in her life, and I had never skied in my life, so I was like, I don't have to act. I just have to be, and he was supposed to be the expert skier, and he had ski, but I don't know how expert you were. Oh, yeah, expert would not be the word that would come to anybody's mind. <laughs> was it on your resume, skiing? No, no, actors do that. Actors will put, at the bottom of an actor's resume, there's like special skills. And you'll see, like, you know, fire eating and juggling and horseback riding. I can't do it. It's I mean, all made I know, up. I know guys that have stuff down there, and I laugh at it. It's hysterical. Because what will happen is you'll get cast, and then they'll ask you to do it. But, but you didn't lie. No, you was, I, oh, okay. yeah. I just have plain dead on my special <laughs> skills now, and I get a lot of work. Okay, well, I want to open this up to some audience questions. We'll have uh, Mike on either aisle. Um, please do say your, you guys can start lining up now if you want. Um, please say your name and where you're from and try to keep it to an actual question. I know sometimes they, we all know that we love them. Um, and I'll let you start lining up. Or wave your hands around if you want to ask a question. Oh, come on, go on over there. Grab the mic. I see you. Hi, I'm Sarah from Toronto. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> My question is for Catherine and James. So I'm kind of curious because in the last quarter, <laughs> we find out that Cassie told Sam that she was a witch. So I'm kind of curious when you think that conversation happened. Do you remember somebody mentioning that, that we had that conversation? Yes, you did. <laughs> I, I said that someone told me Cassie was a witch. Yeah. I don't remember this either. I'm, I'm so bad at remembering <laughs> she our dialogue. Was, she's made of wood. That's funny. I don't remember that at all because yeah. we had that battle with is she even a witch? Because yeah. she never. Because you and I had this conversation. No, not me. me. Was it you? No. Well, it's kind of dark. Okay. But I had the same conversation with somebody. So where did that conversation have happened? It must have happened in bed, I'm sure. sure. You weren't really a witch, right? Were you? Well, Seven years, I should know. A little bit. Towards the end, you were finding, like, oh, she's up to that again. Yeah, well, the you last were... season, it had to be the last season, because that's when the magic got so huge. Yeah, and, yeah we had a lot of magic. Yeah, day. a little over the top, in my opinion. <laughs> but um, she had this intuition where she just knew how to help people. And so it wasn't like you wished, where she would twitch her nose and make things happen. So it was always supposed to be very vague, so I'm surprised we ever got that specific. But uh, anyway, sorry I don't have an answer for you, but okay. I'm gonna go with we never really knew. I don't, I don't think you did. You did. You did. What? Season seven? All right, well, no, this was COVID season, so yeah, we all had COVID, we had COVID brain. Do we have one on this side? Looks like no, so we'll jump over here, because I know there's a line. So if you could talk about any future ones that you may know that you have in the pipeline, whether it's Christmas or not, that would be fun. So she's asking, what do you have in the pipeline? Go ahead, Mark. Uh, I just, I did a series for Netflix this summer, um, and as an actor, when you sign up for a series, they kind of own you for a while until they know if it's a hit or not. Um, it's called My Life with the Walter Boys. It's not out yet. It's a sweet story. You know, the, the setup reminded me of Buffy a little bit because it's kind of the same, like, a 16-year-old girl fish out of water trying to kind of figure it out. Um, it's a nice hook. It's a girl who 
her parents and sister, she, she's in an all-girls school in, Man in Manhattan, and they unfortunately die in a car accident. And her guardians are my wife and I, who have a ranch in Colorado with seven sons. So she has to come figuring out living with seven different boys um, through her high school experience, um, which was which was great and really sweet. So we're kind of just waiting to see for that to air and whether I have an income next year or not. Um, <laughs> Just kind of how, how it works and what we will be what we do. I, hope, I, I, I want to go on a run like her, <laughs> if possible, and have a few of those. So that, that's next for me. Who plays your wife? Um, Sarah Rafferty, who was on Suits. Oh, um, she's awesome. Yeah, she's great. As Trisha knows. Yes, I never got to work with Sarah when I did Suits, but uh, I actually never met her. But I have met her before at, uh, in Los Angeles at events and things, which is lovely. So what's in 2023 for you? Um, well, I have a series uh, called Step Up on Stars airing right now. Um, I think the finale is possibly tonight or next week. Um, so it's almost done. And uh, in terms of filming, uh, nothing in particular set up, but I've got two projects, uh, one potentially at Sci-Fi um, that's sort of in halfway, we're in script stage. Um, and, uh, and pitching, actually, with the producer of the project that he just worked on. Uh, pitching, nothing to do with Hallmark, it's a serial killer project. Um, <laughs> so we're in the pitching stages on that, um, so fingers crossed. I did, uh, did an episode of Fantasy Island with Terry Hatcher that airs. Poor Terry. Um, I think they got the idea for my Christmas movie because right after the, the press came out, or just before Christmas, we got a call from Fantasy Island to come play a couple on Fantasy Island. So that airs just in a few weeks. I think it's episode three in January. It's really fun. We have a we end up in quicksand. It's 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 dark and funny. But anyway, so that's coming out. And then you know I've got to get my daughter into college and get her into I don't I don't know what 2023 is going to be, but we're pushing for a uh, we're pushing good ones. That's out of my control, but we're, we're trying. Yes, we are working on that. And I'm going to start to get jealous if you keep working with Terry Hatcher. And <laughs> not me. <laughs> um, so that is what we're working on. I have a couple other projects that I'm beginning to work on, so nothing to report just yet, but you'll have to check back soon. I have one's a movie and one's a series, so I'm hoping to bring you guys something fun next year. and the relationships of the cast different from your more serious films versus the cheery Hallmark Christmas movies? Uh, I've always found like it kind of works in opposites. If you go and do a comedy, the set feels like a funeral because no one wants to be funny off camera. And so they're all saving it for camera. But if you go do like a horror movie or a thriller, you're laughing constantly because on camera you're not allowed. You've got fake blood and other weird things happening that you have to pretend and kind of do, so it's different. Um, in the Christmas movies, for me, and I think that we all kind of know this model, it's like we shoot them so quickly, which if you have young kids like I do in a family, it's like, it's a great model for family, because we're not out of town so long. But that said, it makes for an extremely quick pace. And you really kind of, it's kind of like, you know, a family, like Insta family, you just add water. And we all kind of get along. Thankfully, like, again, you're all here for this reason. You know the tone. And so it's happy, it's not dark. We don't have to, you know, it's not these intense scenes where we're having to really go to some place as an actor. So more than anything, we sit around and try to figure out how the production department got this many Christmas trees into a living room and in between kind of save a lot is you know try to uh, try to enjoy this time and I think that for all of us you know we we want to even though I always joke that these movies are kind of like the movie Titanic we know the ending the boat's going down <laughs> it's just like what makes it interesting a journey along the way and I think that you know, with these guys producing and being so successful in their storytelling, I think we all try to bring something to the table that makes it a little different, a little interesting, make sure the conflict feels very real. And so I think when you get to the set, sometimes you're like, okay, 
They clearly had two other people in mind they wanted to cast. This isn't like me, so let's kind of make it our own and figure it out and be like, okay, it's not just a misheard phone call that could be fixed with a conversation and the movie's over at page 40. So I think we all try to like bring as much to it as we can, but again, knowing what the, what the material is and the tone, we always ended up having a really good time, I think. One thing about a behind the scenes, people are always asking about behind the scenes, I don't know about yours, but mine was shot in July in Winnipeg, so almost all of them had snow blankets everywhere and just working to make it look like Christmas. You know, you can't have any deciduous trees, everything's got to be evergreen, cedars, pines, or no trees at all, and every inch of ground has to be covered with snow blankets, and then you're wearing sweaters and coats and scarves and it's no joke, 95 degrees. So you're trying to be so festive and sometimes it's a challenge. So and then you feel the beat of sweat going down the middle of your back. Yeah. And just trying not to be dripping wet with sweat in some of these scenes because most of them are shot in, earlier in the summer in the yeah. So yeah. that's that's a funny a funny thing too. If you look really closely, especially in the snow, um, sometimes it's funny. You'll see big wrinkles in the snow the, the The last Christmas movie I did, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, I think was one of the only ones that I did that wasn't in, you know, sweltering heat. And it was funny because they had to put the fake snow in for, you know, the snow blankets and the fake snow for bringing the snow machines, whatever. And then in one one of the scenes, one of the days, they didn't want it snowing because of what around it hadn't been snowing the scenes prior and afterwards, and it started snowing, and they're like, no, stop snowing! <laughs> Always. Always. The weather never usually works out for you. Right, always the opposite. Over here? Hi, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy um, to be here too. And my question is for Catherine and James. Um, and that is about the last season, which you kind of already opened up. Oh, also love you guys, but I gotta really focus up here. I do have a lovely question, but there's like a line, I gotta focus. Uh, clearly another time. is when Zoe said to Joy, I'm the witch, when Joy told Zoe, I'm the witch, and then the next scene, Sam, you say, oh, I'm surprised she told you. She, she just told me recently. That's what she's referring to. Oh, I remember that. That was, that was a yes. joke. That was a joke. Oh, it was a joke. Yes. Yeah, okay. we must, I might have misplayed it. Maybe it Maybe didn't it read. Be, yeah, because I think Let's that was... Let's do that yeah. again. But that's, go that, back. Thank you for reminding me. Right. I do remember, I remember that scene. Because yeah. we, yeah, that was about You did have a few so, moments, though, so where, never, where you knew what I was doing, where you'd see yeah. me doing something. Yes, over the years, yeah. yeah, that was part of the charm. Well, so, and that's, yeah. yeah, and I think, and my question is, like, I just want to put it into the ether, like, is there going to be a movie, or possibly even another season, I know it sounds crazy, because, like, the phrasing of that last season, just, like, is reaching for more. We need to see Sam and Cassie happy, and, like, like see you guys living and doing this. I mean, like, I want to write it, it's so exciting. Uh, there. Like whatever you guys can do, like how close is it? Come on, guys. I, I, well, I really can't say, but you can't it has. Take it has I think just that alone tells you that it has a pulse. It and we're does. Yeah, totally. we're, we're trying. All the cast wants to do it. The producers yeah. want to do it. Hallmark has said they want to, yeah. but they just haven't. I think, okay, well, I think the problem. The problem is with the movies and the show. I think there are four production companies involved. Uh, okay. Some in Toronto, some in LA, right. even ITV, right. and so uh, they all have to either agree or sign the rights to it. So it's super complicated to get sure. a shot. The whole cast is like just waiting to go, to go do it. it. Yeah. So it, it definitely there's a possibility. Well, it would be a I, movie. It wouldn't yeah, be, sure, it would be a movie. Not another it movie. would be a movie. Yeah. Okay. And do you have any Catherine Disher like amazing moments that you could talk Like. She is so famous. She's yeah. She is so right. Funny. She's one of my favorite people. And could yeah. not be less like Martha. I mean, she's so calm and right. sweet and smart. Um, and so we wow. always have a lot. Yeah, she's so talented. She's really kind of stuck having to play, you know, oh, Martha. Right? <laughs> she's super talented. I'm glad you. I'll tell you. You asked about her. Thank you guys so yeah. much. I have a follow-up question to your question, Diana. Uh, have any of you ever read any fan fiction from any of your projects? Because all of them have lent themselves. I haven't seen any from Goodwood. No. She just said she's going to write it. You should. Okay, yeah. send, it, send it on my Instagram. I'll find it there. 
a hundred years ago, I was on a show called The Pretender, and there was a, there was a lot of fanfic because it was sci-fi. Yeah. But uh, you've done sci-fi, so yeah, I think that I that lends us up more to it, doesn't it? To fanfic or not? I don't know. Probably. Not really the show. I don't think the show did a lot of it. I don't know if there was a lot More of it. More supernatural type stuff. Supernatural and sci-fi, I think. But yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Potentially there might be a whole trove of things out there. Right. And I, just, I don't know. Yeah, Christmas I don't know. movies. Yeah, yeah, right. People probably have written Buffy and Riley as anything. That's, that's yeah. probably happened. I was warned long ago not to read any of that stuff because everyone would hate Riley and Buffy. And they were right. They did. So I steered uh, clear of the internet. 25 years ago, and I remain to steering clear today. <laughs> okay, let's go over here. Hi, I'm Amanda from Alabama, and I want to props for that because I think I drove the furthest, or flew the furthest. <laughs> Everybody's from Jersey and New York. Uh, anyway, um, Trisha, my question is for you. Uh, from watching Burn Notice, and sorry, I don't watch all the Christmas movies here, but <laughs> from watching Burn Notice, what was it like to prep for and play a badass chick on Burn Notice? Oh, no prep required. None. <laughs> yeah. um, I, uh, I was, got tongue tied there. Um, no, it was awesome to do that. I, I quite often get, uh, I think probably because of my height and I, you know, my voice, I'm not, not really girly. So uh, I usually get kind of badass chicks, which I'm happy to do. Um, but uh, no, Burn Notice was actually, it was interesting because it was kind of shot during a, Something postponed it. I don't know if it was a writer's strike or something. So I was supposed to shoot that season in between my Battlestar Galactica episode, uh, seasons. And instead, I had to shoot them concurrently. Uh, is that the right word? Yeah. And, and uh, one was shot in Vancouver and one was shot in Miami. And so I was flying back and forth constantly. And that's, that's quite exhausting. Um, but it was, I, I know I was terrified the first day because I, I had watched the first season and was a fan of the first season. And so whenever you go into a show and you're a new character, it's always a little scary because everybody's a team already, right? And you're the newbie coming in. And uh, my first day, I had to do a scene with Jeffrey Donovan, uh, Michael Weston, on a beach speaking Kurdish-accented Arabic. That was my first scene. And I am not great with accents or other languages, and I was terrified, absolutely terrified. And but I managed to stumble it out somehow. And Jeffrey looked at me and he goes, "You got the right tone. Welcome to the show." I was like, "Yes!" Um, and he totally pulled it off. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I had a great time. I, Bruce Campbell is just a delight to work with. Um, uh, yeah, I had a really good time, but I, I didn't get to mingle with the cast so much. I didn't actually get to know them too, too well, too, too good, because I was flying back and forth. Um, I didn't get to stay in Miami, so I'm flying in and work and jet back out again. Thank you. We have time for one more. Pat from West Chicago, Illinois. With the proliferation of Hallmark Christmas movies, one of the things I would, I would guess characterize it as the Hallmark Hall of Fame Christmas movie is sort of been lost. When, the one that comes to mind, my favorite, is uh, November Christmas. Um, so I was wondering if, I know you're actors, but it sounds like, James, maybe you get involved with the, on your own deals, uh, maybe not just leaving it to your agent, but I'm just curious if you know if there's any plans for the Hall of Fame to be sort of resurrected. And since I mentioned November Christmas, which had Sam Elliott, Maybe Catherine, you could star in one called December, January Christmas when you fall for Sam Elliott. I'm in. <laughs> I want to be him when I go. Hell, on. I'm in. I was going to say, I'd fall for Sam Elliott. Uh, well, I've been asking this question to everyone. Um, we're all here in part because it's the Christmas spirit, which is a giving spirit. And all of the actors here I found are so kind in giving themselves. So I want to give you each an opportunity to talk about some of the causes that mean something to you and something that you're working on to give back. So Catherine, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, I mean, there's so many. There's, you know, there's always new ones I'm hearing about and wanting to get more involved in. Um, there's an organization called Youth for Human Rights. 
that I'm very active and involved in, and it's just all about the, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and um, how important that is for each of us to, to know and to ensure that we have, um, have that, have other people agree with us and follow as well. Well, that's a good question. I, I was in a, a band called Man from TV with a bunch of TV crazy TV actors, and we we quit, we raised about four or five million bucks. It's really Hugh Laurie's band. I mean, Hugh, Hugh was the big draw, but uh, it was through all the different TV shows, and so we were able to give money to a bunch of different charities. And I ended up being the, sort of the um, environmental guy, which I always have been. But they're also important, especially if you have kids. You want to give to all the children's cancer. And, Autism Speaks and all of them, but, but, but mine ended up being the Conservation Fund and the uh, Natural Resources Defense Council, NRDC, just because there's so many needs everywhere. So, uh, yeah, but it was hard to, to just worry about the environment once you have kids. I said, wait a minute, I've got to worry about them too. So there are lots of worthy ones out there. Um, uh, animals are near and dear to my heart, so one of the things that I've been working on is quite a bit this year is the Humane Society, uh, Interna Humane Society International um, trying to get uh, cruelty-free cosmetics, uh, the banning of, of testing on animals for cosmetics, for beauty, um, unnecessary in this day and age with all the computer modeling and, and um, past testing that was already been done. And uh, so we have, uh, we did a film called Save Ralph, a little stop uh, animation, and that did did really well and helped get the message out. And we've actually um, just recently passed the legislation in the United States, and it's been put up for a bill in Canada. Um, it's in about 39 or 40 countries in the EU and around the world have already passed it and banned testing. Um, and so we're trying to get uh, some of the you know United States and Canada and Mexico and Brazil to to follow suit. And so that's what I've been working on. Yeah, and I kind of dovetail, I guess, what James said, too, because um, I, I was a part of a lot of fundraisers for, actually, Autism Speaks and Cure Autism Now, which merged uh, at some point. Um, and as we see a lot of the animal things, but then suddenly you have kids, and then my, my kids, you know, they're, they're young, but we got to a certain age where I wanted to get them into the volunteerism, so now it's very grassroots, local level, like, I'm a part, I'm on the board of the Parks and Rec Department of our little town, and we like sponsor a street that we go clean up and take our stuff and so it's stuff that I really try to actively get my kids involved with too to, to try to show the importance of kind of some of that and especially working you know in small time sometimes some of the things we, we sometimes get invited to events and they're like hey we'll donate a thousand dollars on your behalf to a charity of your choice and these days I pick my small town library or a small town like sports program or something like that Try to help not just the big boys, but also, but also some of the small town stuff too. Thank you guys so much. We have two more minutes, so I want to quickly run down and hear your favorite Christmas movie that is not your own. So, Mark, we're gonna go back. Get back I haven't seen any of them. Other than my own. <laughs> it's, it's the opposite. I haven't even seen one of my own. Oh gosh, who doesn't love Jimmy Stewart? Uh, you know, it's like when your tongue gets stuck to a pul frozen pole or Jimmy Stewart, it's really hard to pick between the two. I don't know. Yeah. Is that a single one? Yeah, that's really the only one. I grew up with a lot of television, so I didn't grow up watching Christmas movies. Um, and I still don't really. And I remember when I was when I was married, my husband, my, my ex-husband now, but he was like, you haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life? We watch it every Christmas. And so I watched it every Christmas while we were married, and it is such a wonderful story. But um, yeah, we're not really well versed on it, especially when I was a kid, Christmas stories. The nice for being an adult, too, is the, the Christmas story, the one with Ralphie, and the, just because it was my son's favorite, and my members are watching my son watch Christmas story. Because it runs almost on a loop, and he it didn't matter how many times it was on, and it just, I got such a kick out of watching him as a little kid laugh at it. So that's stuck with me. And I think for me, probably the holiday. That's just always a good one. Yeah. 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 Although the kids always want to watch Elf, or, which is also which is also pretty great. Uh, well, actually, actually, it's cool. Cool. Well, well, actually, it's so good. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, to clear up something that went around to this week, there is not a sequel of the holiday in the works. There was a big internet rumor. 
there was an internet rumor about a the holiday sequel, and that's not happening. Wow, really? Thanks for the uplifting news. Not, not really <laughs> especially because that's the end of this amazing panel. I want to thank these guys so much. Thank you guys all so much for coming. Uh, this is this is why we do it. Really. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, all general admission must exit the rear of the seating area. Once again, all general admission must exit the rear of the seating area.